will be learning how to DIY a turban cap. Please, if you're new to our channel, support this channel by subscribing and click on the notification bell to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Now let's get started. The materials I'm using for this tutorial have my mannequin, my real blue fabric, we call it poly where I am, but in some area they call it scuba. And you can equally use the velvet material, that's velvet. Yeah, this is a purple velvet example I'm showing us. Then we have other materials we'll be working with. We have our chalk, we have our tape. You'll be needing your ruler, your scissors, you also need um, pearls, stones, brushes to beautify your work at the end. Alright, the first measurement will be taken and the only measurement we'll be needing for this tutorial is our head circumference measurement. And you take that measurement by taking the tape around your neck, your head, sorry. So usually it's around 22 to 23 inches for almost everyone. I've not seen someone having a head size more than 23 inches. So well, 22, 23 works perfectly for everyone. All right, we have um, our 22 inches. This also is my head circumference measurement. You can see 22 inches. So I'm going to set that aside, then move over to my fabric. Right, you can see my fabric is already folded but please as much as you can try and iron it out there was no light as at the time this video was made so i just had to use the fabric this way so i will be folding my fabric using my head circumference measurement divided by two i divided by two because my fabric is going to be placed on fold that is into two so i I'll be folding by 11 inches 20 2 divided by 2 is 11 there is no need for seam allowance because my fabric is stretchy you can see so if I should ask seam allowance it's either going to be oversized but I don't want that so 11 inches is okay for me so I'll use my ruler to Straighten out the lines because the edges are not straight. Okay, now the length I'll be using for this tutorial, I'll be using 14 inches for my cap. But you can see I'm taking out 1.5 inches, that is 1.5 inches for the food. I don't want to add band, so I'm just going to deduct 1.5 so that I can fold it in and conceal the edge. Okay, below my 1.5, I should be having around um, 14 to 15 inches, which is still okay for me. Now I'll go ahead and cut that out. Okay, this is what we've got. I still have my 11 inches intact. Remember, I did not add any seam allowance. So I'm going to be measuring 3 inches from top. That is where my curve is going to start from. I'll go ahead and cover it. So at the three inches descent from the top, I will connect it down to about five inches upwards from where I had my band. Five inches. Okay, so I'm going to make a curve. 
I stopped at the 5 inches area. So we'll just go ahead and cut that out. Right, this is what we've got. I guess it's looking like a half moon. Please don't forget to iron out your fabric. It will give you a more neat finishing. Now I'll go ahead and fold the one that will be serving as the band. That is my 1.5 inches allowance I left or I brought out before cutting. So I'll just fold that over, use my pin and hold it down. Please don't forget to mark on the wrong side of your fabric, please always mark on the wrong side of your fabric so i'll go ahead and pin it down then take to my sewing machine and run a thread through it's best you pin it down because this fabric is very stretchy if you don't pin it down you might have some difficulties trying to get a very straight stitch otherwise as you keep stitching the material will be shifting or moving to one side and you end up not getting a very straight line so i advise you pin it down so i'm just going to mark a line uh, that it's about half an inch on my fold and that is where I'm going to run my thread through so I'll be sewing that with my sewing machine if you don't have a sewing machine you can also use your hand needle okay I'm done sewing and this is what I've got this is going to serve as my band or the fold in front so I'll go ahead and take out the paint. And then trim out the log of thread I have there. Okay, I'll go ahead and fold it over to the wrong side. This is the wrong side of my fabric and I'll mark out half inch which I'm going to be using to close up the loose end. You can see what I have there is half an inch. There was no seam allowance so by taking a half inch from 22 inches I had that was 11 inches so I'll be having 10.5 inches which when you multiply by 2 should be giving us 21 inch and remember our fabric is stretchy so 21 inches is still okay for my head size of 22 inches so I will still take that to my sewing machine you can pin it down or you can leave it that way whichever way works best for you but I always prefer to pin my stretchy fabric down so I'll take it to the sewing machine and just run through my half inch Okay, yeah we are back stitching and closing up the loose end you can see my stitch is just half an inch All right when you turn it over this is what you should be having some people prefer to leave their turban like this but I don't I always like to add that pleats that will make it have some steps kind of look so you you can see my thread and my needle please double your thread and pass it through your needle that's when you double it you should be having about eight lines so not the end of the rope of the thread so i'm taking one inch you can ignore this you can still just um, start your stitch from the beginning or you can start from the other side whichever one 
is okay with you so i'm going ahead in making a running stitch you can see i'm just passing the needle in and out of my fabric in and out So I'm going to continue with this until I get to the end of my cap. Okay, this is what we've got. You can see the stitches are not too close to each other. There are about half an inch spaces in between. So I'll go ahead and pull them close to each other. You can decide to go over it again, but I don't think it's necessary for me. But if you think you should, please go ahead and do that. So I'm just trying to secure my stitch at the tip of my cap. Yeah, like I said, you can decide to just take it all the way back, but I don't think it's necessary. Alright, so I'll go ahead and cut my thread out and show us what we've got okay this is what we have now you can see the folds now you go ahead and flip it over or you turn it to the right side and use your hand to adjust the pleats this pleat help give helps give our turban cap very nice look So this is the first step and some other persons will prefer to have the cap this way but adding a little drama to it in form of a rose will also add more color and more beauty so you can decide to leave it at the center if you want or you take it to the side turban caps are usually best worn on the side so you can take it to the side or you equally push that to the back whichever way you want that's okay all right but for me i always prefer having them tilted to the right you can add your brush if you want it just this way you can go ahead and add your brush at the tip and there are different colors whichever one you want to use you go ahead and use it you can leave it this way it's still beautiful this way but I will be adding a rose to it all right for my rose i'll just be using um the remaining part of my fabric which is about 60 inches long or about 58 inches long then the width of the fabric is five inches width of five inches and 60 inches long Sorry, I couldn't get the actual measurement, but I think it's about 60 inches long. So I'm actually using this length because I want to have a double swell rose, not just a single rose. I want the rose to be double. That's so why I have to use this length of about 5860. Sorry, I couldn't take the measurement.
so this is what we've got i'm going to close up the loose ends using half inch sewing allowance on both sides half inch sewing allowance okay we are done stitching the sides you can see we still have a loose part of our fabric so i'll go ahead and trim out the excess at the tip to help it relax i'll do the same to this other side then i'll take it over to my sewing machine and close up the loose end as well just run a, a straight stitch if you have a zigzag machine you can still use it okay we are back you can see both ends are now closed and um, everywhere is closed so the edge the edges and the rectangular parts of my fabric so we'll still continue with our running stitch sorry don't forget to tie up the tip of your thread you can do it once you can do it twice so you first of all you secure the thread at the tip or from where you you started stitching from Okay, we are going to make another running stitch which we will gather later to form our roof. The stitches shouldn't be too close to each other. You can make it about one inch gap. That's okay. If it's too close, sometimes when I make it too close, I find it difficult to make the kind of rows i want because they end up being too tiny so about one inch interval is okay for me whatever works for you is okay so i'm going to continue until i get to the end of my fabric all right this is what we've got we are done uh, let me see if i can get the length of this fabric actually forgot to measure it when I started okay the length is about 56 inches all right so we will go ahead and draw the thread and pull the thread to form these ruffles we are seeing right now so arrange them the way you want them to be like i said i want to make a double square at the with the fabric so i'm just um flipping or turning the rows you can see what we've got the one of the end is underneath while the other is at the top so i'll go ahead and tap together from top to bottom until i feel they are secured and is now in one piece careful with your hands okay you can see from the point where I pulled out my thread I had to make another 
teacher tacking almost close to where I pulled out the thread. The reason is so that that area will not, the thread will not be so visible at that area. But underneath, you can see I'm giving her some space, tacking it in a circular form just to keep all of them in place and in one piece. Everything is almost together. Okay, I'm done so I'm trying to secure my stitches for my tacking underneath my rules it's not at the top I'm doing it under so I'll go ahead and cut that out so this is what we've got so if you want more if you want it like three swells you can go ahead and make it as long as you want but this is just okay and perfect for me. Alright, like I said, I like wearing it to, to the right. But if you prefer center, that's okay. If you prefer the back, that's still okay. But mine, I prefer having it on my right. So I'll go ahead and position it where I want it to be so trying to get a nice position so here we go the next thing I'm going to do now is to tap the rules to the cap so I'll be pulling it out from the mannequin You're equally going to tack these together in a circular shape. In a circular shape. Just to make sure that all the sides of the rules on top is attached. Properly attached to the cap itself. So remember if you are tacking from the top to bottom, the spacing of your thread shouldn't be noticeable. But you can make um, maybe like two inches to one inch jump from inside the cap because that part is not going to be visible to some people or to your client. So I'm going to go ahead and tack that round. Okay, now I am done with my tacking. I'll just go ahead and secure the thread and cut it out. Our cap is almost ready. You can see what we've got. So I'm trying to adjust my rules. I'm just trying to make some adjustments. Alright, your cap is ready. You can decide to leave it this way or add a brush or decorate it with stones, whichever way you want. But before then, you have to close up that part of the rules. That is where all the cleats or the gathers are meeting each other so you'll be cutting out a circular or a circle kind of shape with the fabric sorry I forgot to pull down my holder and I couldn't get the part where I cut out 
the circle so it, you just have to cut out the circle to cover you can see the shape so this is looking like it's too big for the space i'll go ahead and trim it i think this is okay now so the next thing to do is to apply your ugu gum allow it to dry up for some time and then use it to cover up the space all right this is my uhu gum whichever way you call it we call it uhu but uhu gum is what i know all right i will apply it on one surface of the circle I cut out initially so allow it to air dry for some time that way it sticks very fast when you attach it to your fabric Just go ahead and use it to close the gap. Okay, you can go ahead and use your pearl stones to decorate that area and conceal the edges of the circle. But I would rather use any of my brush and attach it to it. And there you have it. Your turban cap is ready. This cap, I love it so much because it can serve multiple purposes. You can use it on a native attire. You can also use it on um, English or corporate attire. So, you are not at loss. Alright guys, this is the final result of our work. Please do try this out. Give us a thumbs up if this video was very helpful and please, please, please subscribe to our channel to support us and also for more educating, educative videos. Thank you for being with us and God bless you.